birth happy birthday my little pony friendship is magic you're 14 now this video is not intended for kids under the age of 13 years old and if the comments are off it's because youtube did it not me i'm a teenager by the way so hello and welcome back and today is the birthday of my little pony fim it's which is held dear to many of our hearts developed for television by lauren faust and beginning in 2008 and making it to air later on in in October of 2010, Lauren Faust brought a vision together based off of the pony games of her youth, where she had her main six characters, and then they had to rework all of them because Hasbro didn't own like half the names or couldn't make money or something. But she still got a really good sell out of it. And season one began to air, creating a large, unexpected new group of this fandom that had not previously existed. Although adult women and even teenagers had dabbled in enjoying My Little Pony products in the past, young adult men and adult men had begun to take interest in this concept. These were called the Bronies, a controversial group on the internet that was very prevalent from 2012 to 2014 and then kind of fizzled out to the mainstream public, but if you're still in the fandom like me, they never fizzled out. You were still engrossed in watching content made by adult men about a children so to this day. So where was I on October 10th, 2010? I was going to the library. I was five years old. I didn't use the internet and I didn't have cable. I had no idea of all these things going on about a so that I would eventually come to love. That being this so that I talk about the most, FIM. Thing, I found it in the year 2012 and you should know this about me. I love horses. Um, I really loved horses at almost seven years old when I found the show in 2012. So when I saw it on Netflix, a freshly acquired subscription that introduced me to the world of binge watching for the first time, I was like, I'm going to watch this. And I had the specific goal in mind to make it to the season two finale because that, that shit looked interesting to me. I wanted to see what that bug lady was up to. It was a truly invigorating moment for me to find to have watched every episode through in its whole form for the first time. I did see hints of it in 2011 when visiting a aunt's house who had cable, which meant that it had the channel that My Little Pony was airing on. So I had seen parts of episodes before, but I didn't have the full context or attachment to the characters that I grew I began to grow in 2012. Just a year later in 2013 Equestria Girls come out would come out and I would get my first mobile device and I used that to access YouTube Kids which had a terrible filter at the time and watched everyone hate on Equestria Girls but I love Equestria Girls and I loved it then even if I pretended to hate it if anyone else brought it up because it was uncool and no one's supposed to like it cuz it's bad and I really believed I shouldn't have another bullying target on my back for liking Equestria Girls, okay? So that led me to being more silent about my like, love of My Little Pony post nine years oldest. But I watched every episode till the end, even if I had to wait for Netflix and, in the last season's case, Hulu to pick it up. That's where I sat in my connection. Now, the greater brony fandom was an influence on me, especially starting in 2018 when I turned 13 and uh, didn't want to be on that set anymore. I didn't care about kids YouTube at that stage in my life. And that left me in a position where I had now unfettered access to really knowing what the brony fandom was like. And I was afraid to like things because they said I wasn't supposed to like season six. But I adored season six. I rewatched season six. And My Little Pony FIM to me never lost its flavor. By the time I reached the last episode, I said the first tear I've ever said while watching the show be at that point in my life because I don't really cry for fictional shows often. And that was really strange to me to be that sad about something ending when it was a proper conclusion. I had other shows untimely cancelled, but that one made it to the end and that was truly beautiful to me. I think that My Little Pony Generation 4 was truly lightning in a bottle to Hasbro. They could have never anticipated it doing so well. As far as on-screen media goes, My Little Pony is not the one who always has well-renowned content like you may have been led to believe by the more modern internet. It was mostly known for making slop for toddlers to watch, basically, in the Generation 3 era that lacked any real substance or 
slightly interesting fantasy violence with Generation 1, which could go really hard in the comics, goddamn. But in the actual cell, it was not that relevant. For me, I actually had my real first introduction to this franchise from Gen 3, and watching like VHS tapes, I think we checked out from the library because, again, obsessed with horses. So it was very jarring to see the juxtaposition between Rainbow Dash always dresses in style and Rainbow Dash in the main cell. It was very difficult for like two years of my life to separate those two characters. And Pinky being really rational all the time was also a little weird. But I truly appreciate the influence this so had on me, and I'm so happy I'm finally talking about it in a greater context. Anyway, if you liked this video, consider like, commenting, and subscribing, and tell me, what were you doing on October 10th, 2010, and were you a fan of My Little Pony in its first year of production? Bye!